You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thoroughbred Podcast. I got Joey Spencer. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? Uh, not much. How you doing? It's, I'm doing great, man. It's always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, it's great. I it's feel great like uh, I feel like I'm just I'm calm and excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a good. Uh, you're in the middle <laughs> there, right? It must be the shirt. Yeah, that's what it is. So knowing we were gonna do this today, I'm like, I know I have a T-shirt oh, there that I haven't. Oh, you're good. That I haven't okay. rocked yet. So I actually came to work with no shirt on today, just so I could wear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so check it out, Thoroughbred Podcast. Hit us up, iTunes, Facebook, uh, wherever the hell you go to find po- uh, podcast. We're there. But I got Joey Spencer in the house today. Um, super excited to share a lot of a lot of fun stuff going on uh, in his life. Uh, the Thoroughbred Podcast is about an elite leadership business podcast, and, and one thing we've learned is everything is a business. Boxing Absolutely. is a business, definitely right. It's not Definitely. just a sport; it's Absolutely. a business. Yep. So uh, let's just jump in right off, though. Yeah, you just got married. Yes. Yep. That's, That's awesome, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of a, it was a short notice thing. It was, um, you mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, so the people listening are probably like, oh, short notice. So like what? Uh, six <laughs> yeah. months? Uh, That's how normal people do short notice. You know, <laughs> I did it in like a week. So, so I proposed and, and about a week later we were, we were married. So, uh, but like I, I was kind of sharing with you yeah. before, uh, we got on, that was always kind of my plan. I always warned everybody, including my wife now that. Like this is our engagement. We had been together for since you know forever, and since and great, we, we since dated what? the first time when we were in sixth grade. Yeah. you know so, and um, so I said, you know, this is our engagement. We've been together for how many years? Six years, you know. So, uh, when it happens, I'm not waiting any longer. You know, when I propose, it's going to be the right time. And a week later, you know, that's when we're going to get married. And she always thought I was just messing around, and, <laughs> and, and, and they thought I, you know, I was bluffing, but. I really, we really did do it in a, in a week. And I didn't even know if it was possible, but everything came together so well. And, and I'm talking, nobody knew I was going to propose either. Not my wife. I mean, she knew I was going to propose eventually. At some point, right. But she didn't know it was coming there. I mean, right. I was gearing up to fight again in my last fight. So what prompted that? I mean, it, you know, yeah. all that time. I mean, it's interesting because my son's here. He's 20. And he's yep. been dating his girlfriend. Yep. Um, how long, Christian? Three years three years yeah, right yeah. so I, I love this idea right now that that we've got and i don't know what it is but i mean you know you don't see a lot of people date from sixth grade on right you right. know especially in today's society so i right. think it's super noble oh but yeah what, what prompted this okay we've been dating since sixth grade and now all of a sudden <laughs> i'm gonna get this i'm gonna i'm gonna fire this up and get rolling well um so i was waiting for the the perfect time we had um i was waiting for the perfect perfect time and uh basically I was planning on doing it after the fight previous, so um, I wanted to have a fall wedding. So I was thinking I was going to do it right after my, I forget what the date was, of the fight before this last one. I forget what the date that I fought in. I I don't even remember what month, but I was going to do it right when I got home from that. And then... Long story short, you know, hunting season was there, you know, and uh, so it just I, wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. It was, time. I you was, know, it was hunting season and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So not to say I, you know, put that on. I was just traveling a lot, and I realized that that probably wasn't, you know, the best time. I was going on a lot of trips and things like that, and I was like, you know what? I don't want it to be rushed. I'm gonna wait till after the next fight. Well, but then there's irony in that, you know. You don't want it to be rushed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so just just so I could chime yeah, exactly, in, real, exactly, exactly. So, I mean. Um, it was Wednesday. I was in a hockey rink at Rocco's <laughs> practice, and his mom reaches out to me, and she says, "Hey, what's going on?" I said, "Nothing. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, could you? Would you like to come to Joey's wedding?" I go, "Yeah, sure. When is it?" Now this is Wednesday. She said Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that that happened was, is I'm thinking, okay, I've got a fight coming up, and um, I had been training since my last fight. I never really took a break. I stayed in the gym, and um, I wanted to do it in a time when I could have like a, a week off, you know, from training and spend the time with yeah. you know, my new wife. So I, um, we were in the gym and I had been training for quite a while and I got my fight date. I forget what, what the date was on it, but, um, we had had a team meeting and, and they were like, we're going to give you a week off because you've been training so hard, you know, and once you got the fight date, they right. kind of knew then the schedule. Exactly. Yeah. So we had like eight weeks till the fight and they were like, we don't want you to overtrain. And, you know, peak too early. You've been training for, you know, six weeks since the last fight. So they were like, uh, we're going to give you a week off. And I was like, right now. Yeah. You know, I went home and I proposed. Oh, so, that's uh, awesome. So, I, we, you know, because so, I knew I was going to have that week off and everything just went went perfect. And uh, 
it all came together and we we enjoyed some time off and um but this this last uh few few weeks since my last fight has really been the first time we've had some extended some real downtime, downtime yeah. you know together yeah. and um she's still been working but it feels like because when we when we first got married we went right into training camp and she um she wanted to take over all my nutrition help me out do all my cooking and stuff like that so she was working a full-time job i was training full-time for a fight and she was also doing all my nutrition all my cooking before she'd leave for work, and she already left for work at 6.45. Sounds like there's a business there with this cooking. It, what's that? It sounds like yeah. there's a business there with this cooking. You know, there's so many of these uh, order meal, mail order meals. Yeah. I have a guy that yep. delivers meals for me every week. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that's going to be something that we, we get into eventually. Ah, see. It, it's a... Uh, but um, so she was doing all that. So it's been nice after the fight to just well. And for those that, that don't know the background here, like I mean, you know, I didn't meet Joey because he was a boxer. I didn't meet Joey because I'm like, oh gee, I want to sponsor him. Um, I met him because I was fortunate enough to to you know, your dad reached out to me to sell your home after yep. you guys were had moved to Cali, and um, and I've told the story before, and but I'll share it again because I just kind of feel like that's where my heart is right now <laughs> because now seeing you know meeting Tabitha yeah. um, when we did the Uncle Ray's thing two years ago and pup many putting with something that was two years ago about i know that something it's crazy crazy it was right after i got home yeah and uh you know i walked into their house and i remember this like it was yesterday you know the house was nobody was there uh i had uh, your dad gave me access to the house i walked in the house and i'm just kind of walking through and i'm like man like it it was uh there was something about this house i mean you could feel the holy spirit in this house Mm -hmm. and i just i called my wife i was like oh my gosh i wish you were here right now Mm -hmm. she's like what are you talking about i said it's just something about being here and so to getting to know you and getting to know your father yep. and then meeting Tabitha because now I'm like the big brother. Well, I got to meet his girlfriend. Like, <laughs> yeah. check out this girl. And, and it's exactly who I would expect you to be with, you know, just a, a kind soul, yeah. uh, a, a beautiful, a beautiful girl inside and out. Absolutely, and uh, yeah. so congratulations Thanks, to you, man. man. I think Appreciate it's awesome. It. I'm nice. very proud of you. I'm happy for Thank you. you. Uh, and I think it's an awesome story too. You know, I mean, we don't see that much All anymore right, into, in today's it. society, yeah. but you know what? Yeah. That's, that tells me that just knowing that, that you're focused on the right things, the internal things instead of the external and what does this guy think and what's this, you know, you're very focused on, on your foundation in faith. Yeah, right? absolutely. You know, she's, she's definitely my, my dream come true. You know, there's no, um, other people might be like, oh, he's too young. You know, even some of my friends and, and I understand that, you know, because they, they couldn't wrap their heads around yeah. me getting, getting married this young. I mean, could and couldn't, you know, because they've also been with me for the longest. So sure. they always knew it was coming. So they, they were surprised that we were doing it at, at 19, but they also knew this is who he's going to bury. This has been, right. you know, it's it's been, been, it's been written. It's been like Joey and Tabitha yeah. for the longest yeah. time. So, so, so people weren't really surprised about it happening. But even the people that were surprised that I was doing it so young, like you've got your whole life to live. I've heard that a million times. And it's like, this is how I want to live my what, life. This is what I want. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? This is uh you guys can go out and I feel like that's more wasting your life than if I got the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with, why waste any time? Amen. There's only so much time. Amen. You know? Well, and we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, right? Exactly. So I w- what am I going to wait? Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. So let's jump in. Uh, when's the next fight? Um, the next fight is April 10th in Minnesota. Awesome. So, yeah, we got that uh, date directly after the, the last fight. As soon as I got out of the ring, they, they told me that I was fighting April 10th. So I kind of was glad about that. I knew yeah, that, what my schedule was Yeah, that's the first time you've known like. that far ahead, isn't it? Well, I've known maybe a couple other times. Um, I've had like the schedule, but pretty much every other time that I've known, it's changed, and this one looks like it's solid. So Awesome. So, well, uh, and now nice do you have an opponent schedule. yet? No, or not that, yet. Okay, that, that'll not come yet. down the line. It'll come in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it'll be there in the next couple well, weeks. Well, before you know it, it'll be April 10th. Yeah, so, exactly. So we got a spar. They told me today that we're going to do a sparring session today, and I'm like, um, how about we just work out together? I don't really want to <laughs> spar with him. And then yeah. he said, well, you can spar with my little brother. I said, man, forget that. I'd rather get beat up by you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm going to get beat up by a boxer, it's going to be a pro. That's right. So, so I'm excited. Excited for that though. I've been uh, I've been real clean. Um, just got done off three day juice fat uh, yeah. juice cleanse. So you're and that training. Was, you're in training camp. I'm in training, man. Every day. <laughs> okay. Five a.m. I'm up. I'm at the gym by five forty-five. So sweet, man. And rocking. Awesome. I've been going seven days. That's great. Do you go seven days? Or um, do you take one I, off? I pretty much always do something, even on like a rest or recovery day. It's always active rest. So I usually go six real days and then one recovery day. But, that's, but that's that what recovery I've done. day I am training. Like I go for a run or I go, you know. So I just go walk, like I go six days with the trainer, mm-hmm. which I think he's bailing on us tomorrow, tomorrow being Saturday. Yeah. But then I just go one day, I go walk on the, tr- uh, incline on the treadmill for an hour. Yeah. I listen to my Lauren Daigle and I just, I just 
That's my one hour <laughs> alone for the whole week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So April 10th, um, in Minnesota, you guys know the date, probably the first to know. Um, we had, you know, Stacy Dahl from our marketing team, uh, you know, someone from the community uh, has been involved with Snuggle Sacks and, and, and a lot of other things inside of the community. Yeah. She uh, brought uh, her family last time to the fight, said it was amazing yeah. to be there, said it was very different to be there yeah, absolutely. than to, uh, you know, than to watch it on TV, obviously. So that yeah. was awesome. That's how do you great. Feel? I was happy to be Yeah. How do you feel when people come? Like, like does that make you feel you probably don't even be thinking about it when you're getting ready for the fight right well you know honestly when i'm getting ready for the fight like you said i'm not really thinking about it because you can't really think about anybody that's in the crowd even uh you know family members you got to block all that out you know because you be the, thinking about tabitha uh she's usually uh <laughs> i try to actually keep her even you know further she away could be in the locker room but i try to keep her out because just on the night of the fight just so that i'm not feeling soft at all you know <laughs> Feeling too lovey-dovey, you know, before I get in there. But then, obviously, she's the first person I see after. And, um, but, you know, essentially, you're about to get into a fight. So, yeah. you got to keep your mind right. And um, it's kind of a, it's a very, uh, very nerve-wracking thing when you're about to get in there. So, so you got to so you gotta do you, just kind of tune everything up. How do you, how do you calm up. those nerves? Because I think everybody, you know, in leadership, in business, everybody has these moments that, you know, there's parallels. There's so many parallels. You know, my my uh, my son who's 10 is a goalie in hockey, right? And he's got his championship game coming up. And I know that he's going to have that that mm. nervous excitement. Yeah. Uh, Christian played hockey. I played hockey. Everybody that's done something sport-wise has that nervous excitement. Yeah. Everybody that has something big going on in business or, you know, a big change happens or you're getting ready to launch uh, – uh, six billboards right. you know what i mean like how do you manage that when you're getting like and, and for you it's you know getting taped up really getting dialed in how mm. do you manage those emotions um well I, I always like to focus on a quote that my dad told me when i was young i don't even know who, who it's by i know he read it somewhere but it's uh fear causes hesitation and hesitation causes your worst fears to come true and uh that's something that i try to focus on because you know especially in a fight things are so mental and they're so um it's just like it's it's a game of inches. So if you freeze up or tighten up at all, and your your reflexes aren't aren't free, your mind's not clear. You know, one little hesitation could be the end of the fight. And um, so that really resonates with me because the fear can cause the hesitation, and the hesitation can cause you get flattened. And um, that's a, a very and that's real, no good. No, 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 <laughs> no good. So you you really just got to focus on the fact that you know what's whatever's going to happen is going to happen. <laughs> For me, something that I've kind of come to in the last couple of years, and I think getting married really helped me with it too. It it uh, it changed my whole perspective. I've been with with Tab for a long time, but when we got married, and um, I realized that, and some people might even look at it like boxers or athletes or things like that might look at it like it's a bad thing, um, this mindset. But it really freed me thinking about the fact that boxing is nothing in yeah. the grand scheme of things. You know what I mean? I've got. I'm a husband and I'm a family member, you know what I mean? And uh, I've got a great family who loves me. I got a wife who loves me. At the end of the day, like, you know, my, my, um, I would see that as your biggest life, strength. That, exactly. hundred percent. You know, and I feel like that too, because no matter what happens in the ring, it's not like that's going to change who I am. You know what I mean? It's like if I fall in the ring and everybody sees me, um, you know, lose a big fight or, or things like that. Um, I know that I've still got those same people to go home to. It's not going to change, you know, well, so I, I got to keep and that And that, that is that parallel in business, right? Because, and, and, you know, all of these things tie back to real life. Yeah. And, and, and I always feel like, you know, when, when I see people, because I've experienced it, right? Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is I'm living internally. I know who I am. Right. I know who I don't need to be. Uh -huh. I know who I'm not worried about, you know, and, and when I say I don't care what people think, it's not that I don't care what they think, but it's not going to change the, I know how I need to live my life and the things that I have to do to be happy and fulfilled. Yeah. And so that's kind of what you're saying is, hey, if I lose a fight, I still have this this foundation. Yeah, 100%. But that goes back to your faith, right? 100, well, 100 percent. And that's that's definitely, you know, where I got that from, because at the end of the day, you know, I said this before my fight, you know, um, I struggled a lot with when I first came into this platform. I had a, you know, I was an 18 year old, 17 year old when I turned pro. All of a sudden I got all these people who have access to me through social media who, you know, are watching me on TV and things like that. And um, I didn't know how to deal with it. And not yeah. only that, but that's where I found my, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, it's like where I, where I got my image from, like internally, you know, it's like, um, it's where I got, it, it has a lot to do with ego too, you know, oh, for and sure. I see those comments, I see all that. And I'm, I'm like, uh, it 
kind of pumps you up. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, you know, I'm the man, you know, but then if you love those, those good comments and, you know, you actually take that to heart, what are the bad comments right. going to do to you? Right. So I really had, um, you mean like the last time we went live on your Instagram, the guy was capping on me for my crooked yeah, smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that, you know, people are so crazy and, uh, but you've got to, I mean, that's the thing. You've got to be content in who you are. And I think that, 100%. I mean, there's people that, that live, go through life. Yes. That don't about find, him. yeah, worried yeah, about what you, everyone and, else you know, thinks. That's what I was really thankful for. I think God put me through um, a series of, it, it, it was a transformation, you know, and um, I definitely, there's a lot of different ways that I can look back on my career so far in my life that he worked that out of me and changed how I, how I feel about this, you know, situation people were so critical of me especially it's crazy because it's people who can't do the things that i'm in there doing right right all, exactly you know what I mean? oh yeah but there are people who are so critical about it and um i had to realize like that's not where i find like you know that's not where you find your, yeah exactly you know? and and also like i said kind of the way that i see it is before the last fight i'm thinking people always ask me about pressure and I think it's because people know that I'm under a lot of pressure. You know, it's only, it's only natural. You know, when I'm at the the fights, the TV people always ask me about pressure. The the commentators are always ask me about how I'm dealing with the pressure. And I'm like, well, that's why there is pressure. Exactly. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. And then the way that I've answered that question in, in recent couple fights is the only, I don't have any pressure because the only people that I care about what they think is my family and God. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I've totally let go what the fans and what critics think of me and, you know, how, how much, uh, and even what the, the positive, you know, the fa- my real yeah, fans, you, yeah. I can't look you, at that. I yeah. can't think about that. I can't let that. I can't believe my own hype because that's what causes everybody's ego. downfall. You know I always what I mean? tell people, you know, ego's a, ego is a sneaky little sucker. 100%. As soon as you think you got it under control, that sucker little pops up on your shoulder. Exactly. Yeah. And you got to watch it. causes it. you to be weak. And 100%. It, and it also, it messes with your, um, yeah, it just messes with your mindset. So, it messes so with your you hunger. So when you with that, when you said, you know, after getting married to Tabitha and really now, okay, now I know, now I know my God, I know my wife, I know my family. Yeah. Th- you said that freed you, right? And, and other people would see that maybe as a weakness. And the only reason they would see that as a weakness is because they're not free yet. Well, and not only that, but people talk about you got to be obsessed with whatever you're doing. You, it's got to be about obsession. I feel like that's a lie. I do. I think that you don't have to be. I think this is everything we're doing is worldly. And the only thing that, you know, the only reason why I'm boxing is is to bring God glory, you know, and uh, to with my platform as it grows and with, you know, as my finances grow, everything I have and everything I'm doing, I want it to be for the greater good and the greater purpose of what God, you know, wants me to do. And it's not about myself, my own money, my own ego, my own all that stuff. So people who are obsessed with a worldly sport or a worldly thing, I think is pretty, is pretty, um, I don't know. I think it's weak and I think it's, uh, it's not the right mindset to have because if you're, let's talk about business. If you're obsessed with business, you know what I mean? You can only, there's only so many places where your heart and, um, your attention can be. So if you got, and, and definitely managing, you know, those things is possible, but, if you give everything you have to your sport, if you give everything you have to uh, your business, you know, where does that leave your family? Right. Where, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Like, what are your priorities? And at the end of the day, I'm willing to, I'm very disciplined about my, my sport and my craft. And I know that it's a very um, serious thing, um, what I'm in there doing. So um, if people hear me talking like this and they might think, oh man, he's not, he doesn't sound dedicated. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> you know I, what I mean, yeah. trust I, me. I'm, I'm dedicated. I, I think anyone discipline. that's seen you train and knows you're dedicated, but, 100%. I, but, but I think this is the it's difference. It's more about a mindset. Exactly. It's more about, not about your actions. It's more about where your heart is. Well, so know? I always say this, there's motive, there's actions, and then there's motive. hundred percent. What is the motive behind your action? And that's where I'm getting at. Exactly. And I, I mean, but the thing is society teaches us all the opposite, exactly. right? You got to be cool. You got to be fly. You got to have a fat whip. You got to do all of this other stuff 100%. and that that's what's going to make you happy. But the truth is it never fulfills people. Definitely. You know, I, I always say there's never been enough money in the world to keep a marriage together. Exactly. So it isn't money. Yeah. And I'm, work, 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 you know, until you have no time, you need to go to the, you, you need to further your education. You need to work harder. You need to do this and that. But at some point it's like, when is it enough? You know well, what I mean? When can I just be happy? Right. Exactly. <laughs> when can I just enjoy my family? I think that's something that I, um, always appreciated about my dad is like, 
he he worked hard. You know, he was a hard worker. He ran his business, and you know, growing up, he had a very successful business. And but he would never put that in front of being out on the yeah. boat with us. You know what I mean? Or, or fishing with us, or things like that. That that was. I always remembered that. I always felt like he could have um, he could have taken his business to even another level. But he wasn't going to put that in front of that, those times with us. You know, it was enough for him. He had yeah. a successful business. Yeah. He'd rather spend the time with us. And that was something that, you know, that's something that I kind of take take with me and I feel like is an important important yeah. part of things. So so you've got a lot of wisdom. I mean, I've said that all along. And I think, you know, a lot of that comes from your faith. A lot of that comes from your family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Surrounding yourselves uh, or surrounding, excuse me, yourself with, uh, with you know, people that are going to uh, lift you in a positive way. Yeah. Uh, Probably also hold you accountable a little bit. I, yeah. I just kind of have a feeling your dad holds you accountable. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how is that relationship? You know, uh, obviously your dad's trained you for a long time and now you're building uh, your career, your pro, you're winning. You're what? How many and oh now? Oh, uh, 10. I just wanted you to say <laughs> 10 and oh, right? And 0. So how has that relationship changed or has it along the way with you and your dad and your dad still being your trainer? Um, it's progressing like a lot in different ways you know when when I'm 17 and I'm fighting I feel like a lot of the responsibility you know I didn't have this mindset as much when I first turned pro you know I was just Isn't a that kid. crazy I don't want to interrupt you but from 17 to now yeah that, that I mean that's such a short time span 100% and and you keep saying about when I was 17 I wasn't this way when I was 17 I didn't think this way when I was yeah. se- so in that little bit of of, of time you've grown yeah. so much as a Absolutely. person Absolutely definitely well I think the situation I'm in has caused me to grow up fa- fast. I had no choice, you know. I like I said, I came in at 17, and I was uh, in more ways. I, I came in, you know, probably more mature for my age than than probably most because of the situation that I was put in, or, right? Or that I was in, and I was, you know, it was my dream. But like I said, instantly as soon as I turned pro, it was like, and I didn't even expect it, but it was like, whoa, everything's different now. You know, everything is different, and all of a sudden, I've got all this pressure, and I got all these responsibilities, and um, and I wasn't ready for it. I didn't want it even, you know, yeah. I, I almost, I'd say I even regretted turning pro at the time that I did really? when I first turn. Yeah. I was like, really, re- I really regretted it. And, um, so, but with time, it just, the situation that I'm in has in so many more ways than one. I can't, can't even probably get into all of it, but has just transformed me and, uh, caused me to really have to grow up because, um, like I said, there's no, there's no place for, I don't know, you know, you can't be you, slipping you anywhere. You can't be immature. You get, yeah. you gotta be, you gotta be perfect almost. And not, I wouldn't say, obviously I'm not perfect. I'm you saying you gotta, you gotta make good you gotta choices. You gotta make good choices. And I assume with that, um, especially with your age, especially in this career, yeah, yeah. you've got to set some pretty serious boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I just, like I said, life's changed so much in the last couple of years. Like I, like I said, when I first turned, I was living so much like a kid. It was um, when I'd fight, you know, I, my friends are, are only in their first year of college. You know, when I first turned pro, they were finishing up high school, which is crazy. And uh, I saw myself as this, in the same situation. Like, I'm I'm only 17. Yeah. I can do what I want. I want to do what I want. I want to have some freedoms. Right. Especially when I, when I train in California in such a secluded... Uh, environment for the last four years before that just trying to turn pro so i think in my mindset it was like i moved home i turned pro and it was like all right now this is where i was trying to get to but i realized like no this is just the beginning that's just the beginning yeah. you know it's time to to work even harder than you had to work you got to work even harder to get to that next level than you did to get where you're at now so and that's something that i realized and and um not that i was like living crazy or anything i just mean i wasn't being as disciplined as right. i could have been yeah you know? crazy for you is having two pieces of pizza instead of one <laughs> yeah so so i was like i just it, it's really the difference of it is like i would take breaks from the gym now i don't right you know it's right. like I, now it's a job almost. it's a it's it's a right. lifestyle yeah. you know and i i like so like i had two weeks off and i knew i was going to have a short turnaround for this fight so this was the first two weeks i actually my team forced me to stay home from the gym in the last three fights so in the last three fights so that's a good eight eight months that i haven't taken any breaks that's why you know probably the most that i took off was maybe maybe two or three days you know in between each fight and i'd be right back in the gym i was having training camps before training camp right you know and uh that i feel like 
the consistent work that I put in in 2018. I'm in 2019. It's 2020 now. Are we in 2020? Know, 2020? That's crazy, baby. That's, That's crazy, flying. man. But that consistent work I put in 2019, I feel like is what is going to show through all throughout 2020. So do you struggle at all with those boundaries, right? Because being uh, a young man, right, yeah. you, you've sacrificed so much. Yeah. But I don't feel like, and just knowing you, I mean, it's not like we're chilling every every night, right? It's not like we're hanging out. But knowing you mm. externally and in, internally a little bit um, and just having intuition about you, mm. I don't feel like you're somebody that has this pull. You know, uh, I'll uh, tell of, you what I used to. I did, and like I said, you know, God has changed my heart so much or changed my life so much you know in the last couple of years it's it's amazing i don't think anybody like you said 17 to 19 almost 20 how much things have changed like you guys you know i'm the only one who really knows how much that's true and you right. can see it sitting right. in, you know as yeah. we're talking yeah. but it's actually incredible you know how much that is true you know in the last few years because i definitely did have a have a wild like kind of a wild side you know and uh and uh, I was like, I didn't know if I'd ever be able to shake that, you know. And uh, but I'm such an old man now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just, I, I don't know, man. I, it's like so, the only thing I do is train and and go home to my wife, and we watch movies. That's our idea of just having fun and relaxing. We'll go out and we just we live like it's nice because we are in a young relationship, right? And um, we don't have to live like we don't have crazy amount of. I train, she works, and then we have fun the and rest of the time, but. Our idea of fun, like you said, is is just so minor compared to what well, other you know kids, what, though, you but know, are doing. Maybe, but maybe it's not minor. Maybe everybody else's is so exaggerated, right? Because yeah, they're searching that. for that fulfillment. True, true. Right? Yeah. And and look, I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm just a witness, and I've yeah. been there. I mean, I used to Absolutely. haul a damn horse trailer with a Cadillac Escalade, <laughs> and I couldn't afford the damn thing. Right. 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 So you know, before I met God, mm -hmm. I searched externally. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, had, all this, all these things that we think are going to fulfill us. And, and and they don't. Yeah, they never sure. do. Yeah. Because as soon as you have one, and then you realize you're unfulfilled again, you've got to go find another one. So let's dive deeper into your faith, because I think that's such an a you know for, I know for me in, in our business that mm -hmm. you know the things that we've gone through, the mm -hmm. ebbs and flows that we've had, you know, um, being fired by Remax, um, and, and it's not again about Remax, it's about mm -hmm. that manager. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I just think about that day, right? And people are like people were freaked out, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I got this. It's no big mm -hmm. deal. Jump on my shoulders. I, mm. I, I, we're, we're all good. Don't worry mm. about it. You know, I ran home to my wife and I told her and before, before I told the team. And she said, are we going to be okay? I'm mm. like, hell yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I think that life prepares us for that. Yeah. Um, but also having that foundation in God, knowing, like you said, at the end of the day, um, look, we hope you never lose a fight. Yeah. But you're in a fight. Right. And like you said, it could be, you know, it, it's a game of millimeters exactly. at point. 100%. And that one, that one punch could be, 100%. you know, and so being able to take that on the chin, no yeah. pun intended, yeah. right? And knowing who you are yeah. and getting up and, and people, oh, well, he should have did this and he should have that. And I can see just saying, no, I don't even need the noise. I'm yeah. just going to get rebooted but like you and said, go back to work. It's a game of millimeters, you know, anything can happen. I've seen people get laid out in my position and um, my age, my same road, you know, yeah. there's a select few kids my age that are, you know, on the road that I'm on, you know, and one by one, they're getting picked off. I'm seeing it, yeah. and especially in this year has been a big one. Like, man, he got knocked out. He was supposed to be the next, yeah. and he got knocked out by somebody who had a 50-50 record, and he's a, you know, he was an Olympic hopeful, and all this, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. people also think it's a given. Every fight, like, oh, you're at the beginning building stages and stuff like that. <laughs> people get knocked out every day. Right. Like I said, it's it's you're in there against somebody else with two fists. It doesn't matter who yeah. you're in there with. Anything can happen. So something that is so you know it can be so random and so crazy i've seen people get knocked out who didn't really do anything technically wrong you know right from a technical standpoint they didn't do anything wrong it just happened the way it did and uh so the idea of me letting that affect my happiness when something so random can happen like you know like that's that's a hard way to live and i lived that way for so long yeah. i lived that way for years you know of 
if that were to happen, that was my identity. You know what I mean? Like, it's that, just, it's and that's so the crazy. word I've been looking it's for. So is crazy. Identity. You just said that word because I was going to say it a minute ago. I was going to ask yeah. you this question. I yeah. thought, man, that's kind of a big question. So I, I so I buried it. But I was going to ask you. That was the word you. I was looking for when I was trying to think of it because you know it's a big deal. You know, identity I, is a big I deal. I was going to ask you, what do you see as your identity? Like, how do you feel people see you? What is your identity? You know, I don't know if I've been able to, I don't, I don't know how people see me, you know, I, I couldn't speak from somebody else's, uh, standpoint or, or from their eyes, but I'd say, you know, I, first of all, I'm a, I'm a man of God. I'm a, I'm a follower of God. I do my best. You know what I mean? It, it's not, I'm not perfect. You're you know, not perfect. And everyone, you know, knows that anybody who knows me knows I'm not perfect. Anybody but who knows <laughs> that there is no such thing as a perfect Christian, right? Right, right. Well, everybody who knows me absolutely knows I'm not perfect, but I do try my best. And that is where my, my, uh, foundation is. And, um, that's where I get my peace from. I'm a family man, you know, family is the most important thing to me. Nothing you know, else is more important to me. And, uh, from my family to my wife and obviously it's it's the same thing but it's just that's that's everything to me yeah. so that's really the only thing I'm, I'm a simple simple guy you know i come from small town roots and i think that i'm i'm blessed to come from that because i'm not really taught that you know money is everything or like that's what you need to chase and, and money even, even, i mean we come from a christian background but and there's nothing wrong with money no. but it's also something that can be a trap and something that you can chase especially in my line of work and that's what everybody's chasing yeah so, even from a from a because we come from a christian background but then also because it's just not what people talk about around here necessarily i mean people like you know have money but like the way i grew up especially in my family it wasn't like something that everybody chased so i was glad i, I see your that. identity as you know faith first and Absolutely, foremost, yeah. family, secondly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also see you uh, as very humble. I um, and I see you as very, like, a very consistent type person. Um, and, and I don't mean just like you work out every day. I mean, very mm. consistent and, and like in your mental state, mm. very calm. Mm. And I, you know, I think I led the show with that. I was excited, but I was also like, man, mm -hmm. you, you're calming me down. You're chilling <laughs> me out a little bit. I like this. It's funny you say that because, um, anybody who does know me and know how I've grown up, uh, I've had a temper since I was forever, like a uh, scary temper, crazy, crazy temper. And, uh, I'm, I was always glad that boxing, just having kind of an just outlet growing for up, that. Growing up as a boxer, it was always something that like kind of honed that. You know, I think if I wouldn't have grown up in, um, with that discipline, you know, that comes from boxing or any martial art. You know, anybody who grows up, you know, training in any like you know, I, I follow a lot of different people and a lot of different disciplines, and I, I hear a lot of people talk about that discipline that it does give you, and I think that. If I wasn't grown up with that, I think with the temper that I had, I probably would have been out fighting a lot more, you know what I mean, elsewhere, right. you know, so I was glad about that. But what you're saying is, is very true about me because, but it's very new and it's very recent, you know, that I do feel like that, you know. Did you ever, gotta, were, I've gotta, were you ever mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but, but that, that was one of those things in the last three years that have, yeah. that have one of those major changes that have happened, you know. Well, it's, so it's, in business, I mean, you know, business, we talk, and I mean, look, this is an elite business podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And part of business and part of leadership and part of anything we do in life is managing our emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one of the conversations I have most with our agents is Absolutely. you've got to manage your emotions, you've got to manage your emotions. And people have, you know... I mean, emotions can be good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be you can be so happy for your clients and want to pour into them so much that you're you're still even though you're happy and everything's positive, yeah. it's over emotional. Like the way that you are consistent in your even keel is how I would kind of yeah. describe it. Is is how we need to be in business. You know, um, our clients are going to have emotion, 100%. right? I mean, they're the ones going through this big transformation. We got to be even keel because we do it every day. It's what yeah. we do. Uh, so managing our emotions, I think, is a huge thing, and that's really what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm also you can't shake me, and you can't be, and I I need to have that mindset because. I've got opponents, I've got a million, you know, people that have their whatever to say. And if I'm, you know, pulling towards and, and freaking out about everything everybody says, right. I had a fighter, uh, some dude um, that I knew growing up after my last fight that was uh, kind of switched up on me and started calling me out over, over social media, just dogging me over social media, you know, that used to, that would just, yeah, it would I'd wanna, you, you know yeah. what I mean? I just like, who cares? I, and, I, and I don't. And it's not credit to me, you know, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. You know, it's that 
it's the peace that surpasses all understanding, right? Yeah, man. I, I, the end of the I day. would say haters are barometer of success. Right. You know, if right. you don't have anybody hating on you, then you probably aren't, aren't uh, and when I say a threat to people, it's not a threat, a physical threat. It's, right. it's well, maybe in, your, maybe in your sport it is, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I mean, look, literally, yeah. you know, I embrace that. Um, I mean, I had a, po- a Facebook post up the other day and uh, somebody posted on the post, somebody commented on the post. It was actually a podcast that we did. Mm-hmm. And somebody wrote in the post, Jesus hates you. Wow. And, and our marketing wanted to delete it. I'm like, no, leave that up there. Let let him sit in that, right? Right. right because right. now everybody that sees that sees who this person is, and uh, and about three days later, somebody else came on there and said exactly what I wanted to say to this person, <laughs> and I don't remember the guy's name. I, maybe it was maybe I don't know Jason. I don't know. But somebody else came on and commented to and replied to Jason and said Jesus loves you, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, that's what I wanted to tell him. But I'm. That was our Ronnie Medawar. Wow. You know, and so people are pe- people are going to say those things. People, I, I just, it doesn't even, I don't even pay it mind. I mean, it doesn't even, I doesn't, it's, it, it's just water off my back. Exactly. I don't even think about it. Definitely. So April 10th is the next fight. Yeah. You're married. You're, you're going for 11 and 0. Mm-hmm. We don't know the opponent yet. We know it's in Minnesota. I mean, a lot of great stuff happening in your life, yeah, right? For sure. Uh, you've got a lot of sponsors now, which is awesome. I see mm. you got the Ponzi going. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. absolutely. Um, and so, you know, a little shout out to to I I can't name them all, but Ponzi, A and W, A and W, John Wentworth, John Wentworth, uh, <laughs> Michael Fogith, yeah, um, yeah. Peerless uh, Mattress, Peerless is Mattress, new one coming up. and uh, yeah, we got a, a lot of good ones. We'll put, um, we'll put La them Fontaine, up. you know, yeah, La a Fontaine. new sponsor that just came on. Great, great people. Great. great I sent you La Fontaine and Fogith. No deal <laughs> yeah hey <laughs> home team right home team but uh what, what what don't we know right what don't we see tell us about i mean you met floyd mayweather how yeah. was that yeah. um you know uh, what are the things that we don't see behind the scenes that we're, we're bringing to life a little bit with the wedding and the marriage and all of those things but but what else is there that's going on with with uh joey spencer man uh it's that's some surreal stuff that's happened in my life you know like meeting floyd and him being front row at one of my two of my fights now and um, him barking instructions and stuff like that it was something you know he's now that's gotta be somebody. tough right your, your dad's telling you one thing Floyd's telling you another 100%. you're like but dad that's Floyd yeah well and I think my dad dad's kind of like, <laughs> no actually my dad's like you know that's Floyd you can listen to him <laughs> It's like the greatest ever, you yeah. know. So he, if you wanna wanna hear his instructions, you can, you know. And um, they were very good instructions, actually. Like the one fight that I actually, uh, one of the fights that he he was yelling, he uh, he definitely helped me helped me get the knockout. So um, that was cool. But it's amazing how things kind of get get normal, you know. It's uh, that was some incredible stuff that was happening early on in my career. Um, but that stuff, and it still happens, you know, every fight, there's people that I'm around rubbing shoulders with that I only dreamed that I'd be rubbing shoulders with. And, um, but it's gotten so normal. And I've also kind of, I'm glad it has gotten normal because the yeah, end of the you don't want to be all giddy because Floyd's there. hundred percent, you know, and it is normal. Those it's something that this has taught me is, you know, Floyd's just a normal guy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, he's uh, done a lot, and he's got a lot of money and things like that. But him and everybody else that's in the stands, or you know, any celebrity, and they're just normal people. Yeah, you know, some people have more money than others and accomplish more than or, or doing stuff on a bigger scale than other people. But they're just normal people, and I feel like that was something that I had to come to because having people like that in the stands, that's just a lot more pressure. I just don't need all that pressure. No, no, you know no. what I mean? Heck I don't no. need all that. And it's um, when you worship or idolize or put people on a pedestal you know especially when you're surrounded by them and you're trying to impress and stuff like that it i've had to come to this uh what i said about i only care about what, my, what god and my family think that goes for everybody yeah you know what i mean yeah doesn't 100%, matter doesn't matter who 100%. it is you know so not just the haters of the fans but like even the, the people that i only dreamed of meeting one day and i gotta remember that they, that doesn't matter what they think either when they're watching me fight you know all right, let's go. Let's go away from boxing a little bit. Let's just talk, Joey. Um, I know a lot of the answers to these questions. In fact, we've probably <coughs> asked them in the past. Um, but 
maybe we've you know I think your fan base has grown a little bit since the first time we did a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is what kind of music do you listen to before the fight, and then what is your just all around favorite music? Like if you have one artist that yeah. you're going to listen to tonight or on the drive, like for me, I, I have one radio. Like I have 16 <coughs> presets, and they're all on Smile yeah. FM, with the, yeah. which is a Christian station. Yeah. When I go to the gym and work out, I don't listen to music. Yeah. When I go on Sundays and treadmill, it's Lauren Daigle, as mm-hmm. loud as it can go, just pouring into my soul. Mm-hmm. So, so where, where are those different uh, spaces for you? Well, like what you said about not listening to music at the gym, I don't listen to any music before fights um, at all. But you, you know? got to get fired up. No, because I, I, you can get too fired See, up. See, I like and, to be calm. Yeah, me too. And that's that's where I where I stay. I like to stay, like what we were talking about, just staying level-headed. I've had situations where even my walkout music has gotten me a little too fired up, you know, so I got to like – Think about what you walkout play Lauren music. Daigle next time you come on. <laughs> I don't even know who that is, dude. Come on, bro. Yeah, I don't even know. Oh man. <laughs> All right, I gotta go, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to cue up some Lauren Daigle, would you please? <laughs> All right. So besides Lauren Daigle, yeah. Who? So so I listen to country music. That's what I okay. like. You know, so all country music, and that's my favorite type of music. Um, you know, I, I love hip hop. I you're love. A, you're a pickup truck guy with I, the shotgun. I, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, that's that's kind that's of the way it is. Man. That's that's the way it is. So, but um, I like hip hop. I like classic rock. I like you know. I like a little bit of everything. But like, if I'm riding on the road, I'm listening to probably country. country. If I'm out doing whatever. So did you go to the Faster Horses concert? No, that's not my kind okay, of crowd. Okay, so that's a boundary. <laughs> that's not. That's a boundary. It's not my crowd. You know, it's uh it's a little too many. Uh, Diseases in one, you know, one place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I don't. Cancel a fight there. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no doubt. Or it could be another fight. That's the other thing. I don't like to get too. too oh, you close probably do. People try to clown on you a little bit when you're out. If it's if it's so, that type so of. So when I was kind of you know out and about more more often, it was definitely something. But I always kept some boys around me that right. that made sure that like if somebody had something to say, then my my boys would would either handle it or diffuse it diffuse or it, yeah. you know, whatever so because obviously everybody knows I, I can't be out about thro- out throwing hands right, you know right risking uh l- lawsuits and injuries so but i i definitely people are always want to especially when they get some of that liquid courage oh, yeah. in them they oh, want yeah. they want to try to see what they're made of you know but uh it always just kind of Whatever, but I I try to avoid concerts. I don't like close areas. I, I, it's just the way I am. Christian man. loves concerts. I can't stand them. Now I'm yeah. going to Lauren Daigle in two weeks, <laughs> and I went a few months ago. But I just I don't like crowded ass places like that. Me neither. I don't like you know my friends are all into like so like if I'm have an idea of like a get together or a party, I'm thinking like fifteen or twenty of the people that like were in my grade like yeah. and then like eight or ten of my closest people and then just us hanging out like by a bonfire yeah. not going out that my friends got in like clubs and stuff like oh. that i'm like man i remember i tried to go to a club one time and i sat down i guess somewhere i wasn't supposed to and a bouncer put his foot on my back and like didn't do anything necessarily wrong but he just like nudged my back and i, I left the club and i was like last time yeah i left right then all my friends stayed and parted i peace out. out we had been there for like 30 minutes so i was like <laughs> I was like, it's going to be a problem if I, and I just, I'm not like I'm some, you know, whatever, but I just don't, I don't like, I don't, know. I I don't mean, like situations where I'm looked at like all these stupid kids in here all just crowded in like we're a bunch of cattle. Like I'm not one of those kids. You know what I mean? When I say that, I don't mean I'm better. I just mean like, I don't live in a stupid, like I'm not a stupid kid that's in here that you can talk to however you want to, you know? <laughs> He's ready to box right now. Remember that temper he was talking about? That yeah. shit's coming up. I, I just, I, I don't do well with bouncers. <laughs> well, look, I'm all, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you on. I, I was hoping some of the crew would pop in here and ask some questions. Anybody have any questions they want to ask Joe? You might want to ask me something. I always say I'd be better to get, I'm always better to get interviewed than to interview. <laughs> look, we'll spin the wheel. Yeah. I want to say something real quick. Okay, bye. Just, uh, you know, talking about Joey's identity um, and being part of your marketing team, you know, whenever Joey has a fight or a press conference or anything like that, we watch that and we try to keep up on that just to, uh, to know what we're talking about, obviously, as well. And one thing I hear a lot 
and I agree, and I'm I'm talking as a mother in the community, um, is if I picked one word to describe Joey Spencer, it would be respectful. And I say that because, um, as you noted earlier, you know, I was able to take my son to Joey's last fight, and one of the best things as a mom that I got out of that is my son seeing Joey's weigh-in. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just get up here? Why are you hiding back there? Someone like you're live. Yeah. Hand it up. <laughs> Hand it to Christian. He's got three hands. And I'm just talking about Joey's weigh-ins. Right. Okay. Every weigh-in you see of Joey is so respectful to your opponent. Mm, and thank you. that's not something you see a lot in boxing. And, you know, I've, I'm a Linden person my whole life, too. So I actually went to high school with Joey's dad. Mm. And, you know, I've known his grandpa for I can't even tell you how long. And I think it's just a real testament to not only Joey, but his family, because, you know, we'll be watching that. Yeah, right. We'll see how respectful you you are to your opponent in those weigh-ins. And, you know, I've heard people that we went to high school with say, his dad would kill him if he was, you know, (laughs) if you were more that, Mm -hmm. you know, pompous. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Well, a lot of that's a show, though, right? I mean, yeah. I well, mean, it, it can be. In, but he don't it, fall it into that trap, Right, I feel right. Like, yeah, absolutely. Know? Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it's a, it, it's a fight, so it's a fine line. You know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta like, you stand your ground, and make sure that you impose yourself and stuff like that. But at the same time, we're both getting in there to uh, do a, do a job and provide for our families and yeah. stuff well, and even like that. And also, fight. like you say, you know, it's uh, I've got people, you know, kids watching me and stuff like that. So it's important to me, and it always has been that. Um, I'm somebody that a, that a parent can doesn't have to like, uh, you know, shelter their shelter right, the kid right, right. from you know, and and there's a lot of you know people that a, a good in the fight game that a good parent probably would like be like, you can't be on their social media without. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, my, me right. being there, cool you can't, you know, I like to... see to... you fight in person, even afterwards, he said, Mom, you know, did you notice that Joey came out and you sat there and you watched other people fight? You mm-hmm. didn't go hide anywhere. He came out, every little kid that came up to him for a photo, you jumped right up, you know, when it walked, stepped away from his family, took a photo, you know, made those kids feel like a million bucks for that, mm-hmm. you know, five minutes or whatever. Yeah, and it, that's what my son took from that. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank, yeah. well, thank you for, you know, that, that part of it. But my other favorite part of Joey and his family is, and this comes from, again, a mom with three kids. Right. And my kids essentially run their own business together. Mm-hmm. So they're together all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they work together, they go to school together, yep. they live together, and they're oddly like the best of friends like my mm. kids get along oddly well but i see that with you and your siblings yep. also so uh, like i just was curious Absolutely. kind of what that foundation what was set for you to to get along so well i mean at the end it's always been that way you know me and my brother were like the best friends you know and we butt heads sometimes but like he's my clo- he's the closest person yeah. to me you know me and him you know when we moved to California and, and we're training and stuff like that, I talked about how secluded it was as far as us for being kids and not really, you know, we weren't in school. We trained, you know, we were right. training to become, for me to become a professional and he's following behind me. But anywhere I've been in the world, I'd been all over during that period of time, you know, traveling like crazy. And uh, he's the only one who experienced everything that I experienced yeah. with me. You know yeah. what I mean? It was, it, there's very few people where I can be like, man, when I was in Paris for right, those times, right. when I was here, when I was there, like he was always by my side, you know, and we did it together when we were like kids, had nothing to do, but we'd go walk streets of Vegas when we were like 15 and, you know, whatever. <laughs> I remember those you photos, know. you're in Paris, Eiffel Tower's behind you. Just, just walking, yeah. man, like nothing to do, just a couple kids you know nothing you know we're not old enough to do anything (laughs) we're just out (laughs) hanging out and uh then me and my sister have always been super tight yeah you know just well she's she's just a great big sister you know yeah she's just in that that's where that came from it's like she just was always so good to me when she was you know she's four years older than me so as i've been growing up she was always a great example to me and always just cared you know i think that that was a good example for me it's like there's so much um even every TV show, you know, it's like the siblings are supposed to hate each other. And I was just like, we always said like, that is so, but that's the devil, right? Yeah, I no mean, doubt. it's just, mm-hmm. why is that a thing? We're, we're all we have. Family's all we have, right? You know, we're, we're what right. we have for each other. Who's going to, who can we trust more than each other? So why do we, 
why are we being taught that we're supposed to hate and bicker and, and be against each other? We're always, you know, always the best of friends, all three of us. I love that you say that about the devil, right? Because I always say um, people, people as they, as they, you know, just things happen in life, right? Mm-hmm. And often I will say to people, you know, when, when you're trying really, really hard and you're starting to get flow and you're starting to get going and things are starting to work for you, I always say God will challenge you in those times a little bit because yeah. he wants to make 100%. sure that you can endure later. 100%. Yeah. And then I got to, because I said that one time and someone said, no, that's the devil. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, dang, mm-hmm. which one is it? Yeah. And so then I just kind of lineate that between, you know, God will challenge you. Mm-hmm. The devil will try to destroy you. Right. Exactly. And that's when you say about, you know, about the, the brother and the and, sister, and the devil is no. trying to destroy that. The, the whole family to structure, the whole exactly. family structure is at risk. Yeah. And they make the men and the families look like dorks. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like everyone, you know, like. Every man in every TV show is just a loser. You know what I mean? And everybody's always just like scratching their head like, why is dad such a a dummy? You know what I mean? Like, why is that? You know what I mean? And why is the kids hate each other? Right. Why? And why is that funny? You know? Like, why is that funny? Why is that something that we all laugh about? Well, it goes back to what you said. You know, are you nervous? Well, uh, if you ask a six-year-old, are they nervous? They first say, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, we we put so much things on, on... into the universe and onto other people. Kids don't know what it means to be nervous. Yeah. Unless you teach them what it means. You ask them every day if they're nervous, they're going to be nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I read a, I, this guy wasn't even a Christian, but I was listening to, uh, I, Conor McGregor has a movement coach that like just goes through movements with him and stuff like that. And he said something that I thought was interesting. He was talking about how a lot of like children's natural instincts you know, that are good instincts because kids are way more pure than we are. They've right. had a lot less life to mess them up, mess yep. their heads up, you know, take their innocence, things like that. And um, they've been taught, like he was talking about from a standpoint of when they get bored or when they get restless, you're supposed to move around. It's good for your body. But you're taught, no, stay stay put, don't stay move. Stay you know what I mean? And that was interesting to me. But from a, on a bigger standpoint, they're being taught to be against their siblings. They're being yeah. taught they to are, be yeah. downright evil to their parents. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're being taught these things. Just from a young age, it's just like nonstop. Well, they're being I mean, taught to... So much of it comes from TV, right? 100%. I mean, like, we, we I can't... If we didn't have... Like, I, I feel like our TVs are like decoration. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a fireplace, you gotta, you gotta, put, a, you gotta put a things, TV man. above it. <laughs> you gotta be careful about those things, man. There's like, if you even think about even what they are, they're just these boxes that pump your yeah. mind's full yeah. so you gotta be so careful about what is pumping yeah. full it, you know it's it's think about like if I were the devil you know what I mean what would I do to brainwash society yeah TVs that just well, uh, radios that just fill you know as we're driving it, we the, can't escape even it even the Disney you know? Channel 100% when I watch the Disney yeah. Channel I'm like huh 100% mm-hmm. I'm like square business but you, you guys are talking about that and you used to be able to let your kids watch Disney yeah. but it's coming to the point where it's like can't no it's more. Crazy. Can't well, let them watch. Well, Nick. Speaking of kids, <laughs> oh, Mary soon. soon. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, it's uh, I want them like right now, but, <laughs> but uh, she wants to wait. You know, she yeah. she can't really afford to. You know, we can't afford for her to to come home from work yet. Tell you know? Floyd to holler at you. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right. And she she wants to be able to come home and, and be a stay at home mom. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. I want her to be so. And that day will come. Oh, 100 yeah. percent soon, soon. We're not far off, so it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. That's but awesome. I'm excited. Well, Joey Spencer, we could go all day, uh, but uh, the show would get way too long. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you always, brother. You're Thank awesome, you, man. man. I love you. It. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Thanks. YouTube, yeah. Facebook. Now you can just call me 810. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out. Thank you, brother. You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast.